Other than Arkadi, everybody is fine. We're on the same page. Okay, good. Okay, guys, добро пожаловать. Everybody is welcome to Gorski Wednesday classes. Uh, very, very happy to see some new faces. Artur, welcome. Eli, welcome. Uh, Pesach, Baruch Hashem, not your first time. Benjamin, not your first time, but welcome anyways. We're very happy to see you all. Uh, tonight's uh, dinner and uh, fruits and vegetables are dedicated in uh, memory of a few people, actually. Uh, we have a, a very special woman who dedicated in the memory of her grandmother, Matsur Bateliyahu. Also, we have a special dedication in the memory of uh, of uh, two young fellows who passed away there recently. Uh, one of them is Natik Nisimov. All of you, I think, know by now about the sad news that took place last week. Uh, Natik got shot and uh, he passed away uh, last Tuesday, I believe, right? And so we're dedicating this, uh, all the blessings, please make blessings on the fruit, make blessings on the, on the vegetables, make blessings on the rice, make all the blessings, help your friend to get a, a better place in the world to come. Uh, so we're dedicating tonight's dinner and uh, the blessing. Amen. And tonight's uh, Torah learning in the memory of Natik Nisimov and Igor Ibrahimov. Uh, with uh, Yosef Chai and uh, Nisim. So, a few things I want to talk. First of all, we run the, around the time uh, of Pesach. Right? So we're going to talk a little bit about the Pesach, but also we're going to talk about the concept of... Uh, Amen. Concept of Neshama. When uh, somebody passes away, uh, when somebody dies, uh, God forbid, he actually doesn't die. It's his body is uh, no longer with us, but his neshama, his soul is eternal. Dusha, dusha na vishna. And uh, so the person in uh, in some way still runs with us. And that's why we do all these kind of things. We do good things uh, for the neshama. We do good things for the for the person's soul. I'll give you a very interesting example. Maybe some of you know that in the end of uh, class, we say, Rabbi Hatani ben Akash Omer, right? It's a special Hebrew thing. You want to make a blessing? Go ahead. Amen. There's, a, there's something we say in the end of uh, every class. Rabbi Hanani ben Akash Omer. Rabbi Hanani, there was a rabbi. His name was Rabbi Hanani. Uh, son of Akash. It's important to mention the person's, uh, person's uh, father. And uh, he used to say, Ratzah Kadosh Baravu Lizakot Israel. Hashem wanted to give opportunity to Jewish people to um, get married чтобы заслужить, он хотел им дать возможность заслужить награду. Therefore, he gave them a lot of commandments and a lot of uh, Torah to study. And, Amen. And uh, you know, being Jewish is not so easy. You know, you have to put on, you have to get up early in the morning. You have to put on filin. Shabbat, you cannot work. You know, you go out with your friends. You cannot eat certain foods. So, but all these things, the restrictions and the things we have to do, they are for our own benefit. Hashem gives us opportunity to earn reward. Amen. It's like somebody, uh, you know, he's told you could sleep till 10 or you could get up at 6 o'clock and uh, if you get up at 6 o'clock, you'll get $1,000 on the spot. Right? So you say, oh, why are you making him work so hard? You know, why are you, why are you bothering the guy? Amen. Amen. But it's actually it's just the opposite. You give an opportunity to a person to earn the money, right? So you tell them, you, you, yeah, it's not easy to get up 6 o'clock. It's not easy to get up 5 a.m., right? But if you do, you'll earn a certain uh, reward. Same thing, Hashem gave us a lot of uh, difficult things to do. But every time we do that, every time we overcome our, our laziness, or every time we overcome our temptations, every time we go out our way to do good things, we give zakah, we, we say the words of Torah, we put on in. All, all the times Hashem gives us opportunity to earn a reward, to get married, to become close to Him. So Hashem wanted to, uh, to give opportunity to the Jewish people to, uh, to get reward, therefore He gave them a lot of mitzvot. Uh, my friends, it's my greatest honor that Rabbi Katsin is here, Rabbi Ari Katsin is here, one of the greatest rabbis in, in the group and definitely one of the leaders of the Russian-speaking jury in, uh, in Brooklyn, uh, principal of uh, Sinai Academy. And uh, 
and the honor of the Yvreski Mir, right? So we're very, very, we're very honored to hear a few words from uh, Rabbi Katzin, actually. And uh, one of the reasons I asked Rabbi Katzin to come in today because uh, Natik used to study in Sinai for a few years. And uh, I think it would be very special to hear a few words from Rabbi Katzin. Don't stay, don't stay, don't stay. No, no, but I'm not going to stay. Let's work. I'll stay just near Rabu. Okay. First of all, I want to thank. Um, okay, I want to thank uh, Rabu Ephraim, Rabu Ephraim, uh, very much for inviting me. Actually, everybody speaks English here. Yeah, English, is, English or Russian? Yeah, English. Both. It's in English, yeah. Both. Both, but it's an English-speaking audience, yeah? But it's okay, okay, please, please, please sit down. So first I want to thank, and I, I, I don't want to say that I think that this particular class is a tremendous significance, uh, because I think it's the uh, beginning of something new, and something important, especially at the time, on one hand, uh, commemorating Natick's memory, on another hand, it's also spring and time of renewal. And I think that for a long time, when I was speaking about Yo with Yosef about Nasha Gorska Abshina, I, I, I felt that we need the young, fresh blood to lead. And really I'm here to, to encourage uh, Ephraim to take a leadership position. And this gathering should be the beginning of something good and something new. Slav, Okay, so the, the two uh, maybe thoughts I wanted to share with you. First of all, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, knowing Natik, who was in my class, who was in my school. And I think we were very good friends, actually. Do we have a family of Natik here with us now? Family, family is not here with us. But uh, uh, I think that I, to a certain degree I can say that I knew Natik. To a certain degree. And uh, Natik was at Sinai Academy a number of years. Robert Gambert was his teacher. Other Roberts were, you know, his teachers. I was learning with him. Uh, and if to say something about Natik, I really want to go back to the first Sinif of Shulchan Aruch. There is a book of the Jewish law. The book of the Jewish law, Shulchan Aruch. And in the first Sinif of, the, of this book, the first chapter, we find that our rabbis say that a person should be is Kenamir. How to translate this? He should be courageous and strong, like a tiger. Am I right? Lavot et Hashem. In service of Hashem, a person should be courageous and strong, like a tiger. I would say like Natik, because Natik was very, very courageous and very strong. How do I know that? Because Natik also went to a school called FDR. I don't know if we have any guys who went to FDR. Natik went to FDR. Did you go with Natik to FDR? So Natik used to come to me and very proudly say, you know what, Robert, what I did? I came to FDR. I, it was the first period. And I came with Filin. And there were Muslims and there were some anti-Semites around me. But I'm a proud Jew. And I put Filin right in the classroom of the FDR. I don't know if you ever witnessed this or not. Like I said, that some guys, you know, started, you know, tried to, you know, show disrespect to any of that. And he did not change his mind at all. He was proud to show that he's a Jew in their face. So, and the fact that they did one made him even stronger. Correct? In a way, I would say the following. Do you know that on Pesach Seder, tell me if this is the custom, we have a roasted boiled egg. Correct? Why do we have a name? Anybody knows why? Why do we have a name? Yeah, please? It's, it's mourners. I guess because they're the mourners. So why why we have it here today? Because we don't have the temple. Huh? Pesach, you mean? Or Pesach. Because uh, we don't have the temple. We don't have the temple. Beautiful. One beautiful idea. Another idea? Yes? Um, I heard that the mouth doesn't have, I mean, the egg doesn't have a mouth. So it's like, um, you know, we should have one more morning. It's easy to say, like, God, why did you do this to me? Beautiful. Well, I believed in you. Beautiful. But just like an egg, we shouldn't have a mouth to say that. Beautiful. Another reason. Anybody? Another reason? 
Rav has read it. Another reason. Same why way. do we have a neck? Anybody knows why do we have a neck? Another reason for a neck. Someone would say, you know what? Because the spring is the time of rebirth. And the egg is a symbol of birth and beginning. And we want to say that, you know, our birth will overcome all the difficulties. It's another way. But there's a wonderful, simple explanation. Any other food you take, the more you cook it, the more you boil it, the softer it becomes. Correct? But an egg, the more you boil it, the harder it becomes, the stronger it becomes. Similarly, the Jewish people, the more they try to fight with us, the more they try to destroy us, the more they attempt to wipe us out with Holocaust and Inquisitions and other things, the stronger we become. Because we say, things that did not destroy us made us stronger. So I think that the strength of Natik, I don't know if you ever fought with him or you ever danced with him, Natik was really strong. Am I right? Those who knew Natik know that Natik was really strong. But he was not strong physically. He was dancing very nicely, especially on the discs at Sinai Academy, in the middle of the class. So, and he was able to do great things with Tvilin in FDR, in DFE. So, if you want to be a proud Jew, and you're a little ashamed or embarrassed or feel uncomfortable, think about Nadia who had this quality of Jewish pride and the courage that we can learn from. I think another lesson, maybe I'll allow myself, another lesson of Nadia is that we do have to have courage, yes, and at the same time, Similarly to a car, you know, a car has to put the pedal to the pedal, you know what it means. Yeah? There are two pedals, gas and brakes. We also have to have brakes. I would say if you love something or somebody, you're ready to fight for it. You're ready to be courageous. You're ready to move forward. Love, this is what moves us forward. So the rabbi said, Ramban says, that we have two kinds of commitments. Ase, velot ase. Do certain things and don't do certain things. Give charity, help others. It all comes from love in your heart. Don't do, it comes from fear or being careful. So Ramban says you need to combine both. Similar to a car, you have to have the gas and you have to have the brakes. And you need to have the mind when to use what, okay? So my blessing to all of us, we should be courageous and wise and smart and in the memory of Natik we should get together here tonight and God willing many other nights under the leadership of a great young rabbi emerging rising star <laughs> Ephraim that Be'ezat Hashem under his leadership we should learn more Torah and be able to perform more mitzvot and all this Torah and mitzvot should be a credit and merit to the, to the elevation of the soul of Natik, then, what's this? Huh? Nisim? What is it? Nisim. 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 Natik with Nisim. Thank you. 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 Всем привет. Хорошего хашерва самех to everyone. Спасибо. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm so happy to see because we're parents, yeah? Many years ago, yeah. Всего хорошего. Пока. Спасибо. Хашерва самех. Всем встречаемся. Спасибо. Ваши дети ходят? Кто ходит в эту школу? Я мои дети учились. Его жена тоже преподавательница была учена. Женский коллектив для девочек была Ешива. Девочки учились у его супруги, мальчик у него сказал. Он сказал же Карин. Это было как-то да. Очень давно. 20 лет. Спасибо Рабакацину за интересную историю. Я, я, честно говоря, к сожалению, не был с Натиком знаком. С Игорем тоже не был знаком. И очень-очень интересно то, что Равкацин рассказал, он очень интересный ваш... У нас есть несколько еще минут, мы можем обсудить несколько интересных. Вилинский Гаон, когда умирал, 
from the, before he died, he said uh, he started crying. So the students asked him, Rebbe, why, why do you cry? Saying, I'm about to leave this world, and in this world, it's, uh, it's a great world. It's a world of opportunities. Why? Because for five bucks, you could, uh, for 20 bucks, you could buy a pair of tzitzit, and you could fulfill mitzvah every si single second you wear it. You could, uh, you could take five dollars, give it to a poor person, and fulfill a mitzvah. This, this, wor this world is great, uh, not, uh, not because uh, I can enjoy it and uh, get the benefit of tasty food or uh, different pleasures. It's great because I'm, I have the opportunity to earn the reward. Uh, when I get to the world to come, all on my bar, then I'll, you know, this is a great world because I have the opportunity to earn. And uh, all of us, when we pass away, the, whether we want it or not, we're going to get judged. You know, if we ate uh, things we were not supposed to eat, if we helped our friends or we didn't, we honored our parents or we didn't, right? All the, all the little and big things uh, we're going to get judged for. And the story I started telling you, Rabbi Hanani ben Akasha, uh, why do we, out of all the rabbis, why do we say his name every time uh, before we're about to say Kaddish? Actually, Rabbi Hanani ben Akasha, he didn't have children. And he was very depressed about this thought that, you know, if he's going to pass away, nobody's going to say Kaddish for him. He said, you didn't have children. And Hashem told him, don't worry, you know what? Uh, you don't have children, but every Jewish community, when they finish uh, a Torah lesson, when, when they're about to say Kaddish, we get, they're going to mention your name. Don't worry, you will not be forgotten. And it's very important not to be forgotten. And uh, Nazi passed away, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I know he doesn't have children. Right? No. And uh, those of us who call ourselves his friends, it's our obligation to perpetuate his uh, memory. And there are a few ways we could do it. And uh, really, it's an unbelievable opportunity to mizake him, to give him opportunity. To, to, to get report after he passed away already. Vinsky Gaon, you know, the Vinsky Gaon, he said, uh, that's it. Once you die, game over. You cannot no long, longer get reward for things, you, good things you do. But actually, the children and the friends on, or anybody who decides to dedicate in the memory of the person who passed away, he can uh, provide extra reward. He can provide extra zafut, you know, the, uh, the merit. The person who passed away. So, for example, the things we say today, the brachot we say on prayers, pray adama, it gives natiks uh, neshama and the other two neshamot. We we doing things in the merit of work. It gives them opportunity to become closer to Hashem. They don't have this opportunity anymore. They can no longer come back in this world and put on tefillin like he did in MDR. He can no longer give charity. He can no longer help his friends because that's it. Once you leave this world, game over. You can no longer earn the reward. But what? Your relatives, your children, your friends, you could continue and do it in the memory of the person. And, and if you really want to help the person, you want to help his neshama. You, you want to give uh, his, him opportunity to, to get extra reward. So actually, we uh, starting after Pesach, we're launching the program to learn in the memory of the Matic and the Igor every Thursday night. This program would be coordinated by Easy in data. And if you want to get involved in any way, first of all, by participating, coming here every Thursday night and learning from 8 to 9 and dedicating the learning in the memory of Natik, you you will be doing him a huge favor. And that will be a, a real, true friendship. Not just posting a message on the Facebook, Natik, uh, I will never forget you or my brother. That's important, but it's not enough. If you really want, if you really care first about the person, you want to do things for him and uh, in his memory. So you can get involved in a number of ways, first of all, by coming and learning here, that's the best way. Also, by contributing, right, we're going to hire a teacher to teach here, it costs money, we're going to provide the dinner, so people can say blessings in his memory, it costs money. And uh, a lot of things cost money, but uh, we can make this program happen if you, if you decide to participate. Do you think? Amen. Well, how many times can you say blessings? So within the, it's a very good question, Pastor has it, uh, within the same meal you say it once. But if you have a long interruption, let's say it's been two hours since you ate rice, and then you're eating rice again, you apples, whatever, you, have, you, you make another blessing. Uh, I think the time frame is uh, until you feel hungry again, or until 72 minutes uh, past. Yeah, that's the time frame. Uh, you know why we drink four cups on uh, Passover night? Anybody knows? 
Почему мы пьем 4 стакана вина в Песах? Адислав? 4 сына. 4 сына? 4 сына, окей. 4 сына. Есть 4 сына, мы говорим об этом на Агада. Это бедный, это смарт, это инноцентный, и тот, кто не знает, что сказать. Окей. Почему еще 4 стакана вина? Почему? 4 сына. 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 Uh, to the point, actually, there are four ways, uh, four types of uh, exiles. No, but it's not just four exiles. Uh, welcome. But the four, four ways uh, that Hashem describes the way He saved us from the Egyptian exile. Okay. The first one it says, the uh, city. I took you out. What does it mean? Uh, the, we were under big pressure and the civil Oh, what I mean? I mean it for different. Uh, I meant something else. Okay, what do you mean? I meant the the Egyptian exile, okay. Babylonian, Roman, and Mashiach. Okay. No, no. Very, the... very good. Moshe is, is referring to a different interpretation. Okay. Uh, Moshe is referring to a particular interpretation, very good interpretation. There are four different exiles. The Jewish people got kicked out of their homeland. Uh, the first time we relocated as a family, we went to Mitzrayim, went to Egypt, and we became slaves there. We were, we were tortured and we were afflicted there as a, as a nation. And then uh, Assyrians and Babylonians, etc. Right? right now we live in the final exile, and, and uh, slowly but surely we're moving back to Eretz Israel, to the land of Israel. Okay. The, 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 the one the explanation I want to focus on today is the is the classic explanation, the explanation that the, is mentioned in the Talmud. So there are four ways Hashem told us that I saved you. He says, I took you out, I saved you, I redeemed you, and I took you to me as a nation. So really, why why do we need the four? Why can't just the God say, I saved you, or I redeemed you, and that's it. We would pour one big cup on the Passover night, we would drink it and say, God saved us. Thank you, God, for saving us. Why do we need the four different ways to extend our pleasure? Well, okay, first we'll do it to, okay, to extend our pleasure so we can drink more wine. Very interesting. It's not to extend our celebration of our world. What? To show respect. Okay, good. But also that the God saved us, He didn't save us overnight. It wasn't that like we were slaves and the next day we came out. It was a gradual process, you know, the, the plagues uh, and, the, and the negotiations with the Pharaoh and uh, trying to convince the Jewish people that God is trying to save them, you know, because all these ten plagues, it wasn't just for Egyptians to, to believe in God. It was even more for the Jewish people themselves to, to see that God is running this world. He is uh, in charge. So when he says, I took you out, what does that mean? It means that they were working really, really hard until now. They were working really, really hard until now. And he made it a little easier on them. He says, I took you out from the burdens of Egypt. I made it, I took off some of the burden from you. Okay, that was the first stage. 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 The second stage, we tell you, I saved you. I saved you from work. That's it. They, they were still living in Egypt, but they stopped working at certain point. Point, uh, they, that's it. They, they were no no longer slaves. They were no longer working, but they still lived in Egypt. They they, they couldn't live. It took more time until they left Egypt. And then we got out, and then I, I saved you. I took you out of Egypt. And we should really stop here. That should be enough. We should really only have three cups, right? Because at this point, that's it. We have our freedom. And us свобода есть So what is freedom, guys? In your opinion, what is freedom? Что такое свобода? Whatever you do. You can do whatever you want, right? That's that's what uh, freedom is. Okay, what else? Anybody else a different what approach? Smart thing to do. Huh? Smart things to do. Not okay, you, you get it. <laughs> you get it. They were free. Huh? They weren't free yet because they didn't have a home. Okay. They didn't have a home. 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 They didn't have Guys, you know, you know, we have, uh, let's say, criminals. They're sitting in jail for like ten years, and finally the person gets out of jail, and he says, "I'm free." Okay, now what? They're not out of jail. Now what? Huh? Go back to the criminal, or so go, go, go to the nice world? Now he has a choice, right? Yeah, yes. But if he doesn't have a plan, he doesn't have a goal, he doesn't have a, what to do with his life, most probably he's gonna go back to his criminal way because uh, he, he, it's not. Uh, 
filled. His, uh, his brain is not filled with something productive. It's going to lead to destructive. So the final, Lashon HaGeula, the final language, uh, the expression of God saving us, says, V'lakachti, I took you to be my nation. What does that mean? What does that mean that Hashem took us to be His nation? What does that mean? What makes us different from all the other nations? So we have opportunity to praise the Yeah, but we have the Torah, right? How, how we have the opportunity? We have the Torah, we have the, the book, the book that He gave us. I took you to be my nation, I gave you what to do. I, imagine you have about 3 million people, they, they live in a certain country, they were slaves for you know almost like 200 years, and now they're free. What are they going to do with their freedom? You know, there was a Russian film about Dracon. What are you going to do with your freedom? Right? Uh, we will keep that time. Okay. You're going to be free, but what are you going to do with your freedom? Right? Sorry, we'll be the And I'm going to take you to be my nation. Hashem took all these people who were, who were slaves. And uh, they, were, they had the slave mentality actually until they all died. The whole generation had to die because they had the slave mentality. They couldn't, uh, they couldn't be free. They, they, were, they spent 40 years in the desert. They, uh, but Hashem gave them opportunity, gave them the Torah. He says, now you're gonna, you have what to do with your life. You have higher goals, you can improve, you can work on yourself. You know, somebody came to Rabbi Mansur and he says, Rabbi, I want, uh, I want you to teach my son Torah. I want you, my, uh, I want you to teach my son Torah. He says, my dear friend, what do you want and not? Your son is going to learn Torah. He will learn Torah. What is Torah? Torah literally means a teaching. It is a teaching. It is information. He said, he he's going to learn something. He's going to learn some kind of uh, of teaching. He's going to observe. And it's going to be Torah Hollywood, right? Either he's going to observe the information from the TV. Either it's going to be Torah uh, professors. So he's going to go to college and observe some philosophy which is not his own. Or he's going to learn Torah Emet. He's going to learn the Torah, which is the ultimate truth, Istina. So what do you want your son to learn? You want Because our heads cannot be empty. And it's up to us to choose how we're going to fill it up. But like Akhti Hashem said, I saved you from the, phys uh, from the physical oppression. You're no longer slaves, but now Velakakti, now is the, is the essence. What are you going to do with your free time? I give you the Torah, now you have what the information to fill your head with. Now you can have higher goals. So let's say you have two people. One is, uh, is getting up early, early morning, every day, and he's going to work out in the gym for an hour and a half. He works out every day. And the other guy, he sleeps till 8 o'clock, he gets up, he makes his coffee, makes a sandwich, he goes to work. Okay, so which one of these two people is free? You say, oh, the guy who gets his sleep in the morning, he's free. Why? Because, uh, you know, he's not working. He's not a slave, he's not working hard. But the guy who's working out, he's, he, he's the slave. They're both free. Huh? They're both free. What do you mean? They have, uh, they have, they have that's both their both choice. Both. That's their choice that's of life. Choice. It's what they choose to do. Okay, okay, so what do you want? That, that's what all of you are saying. Okay, that's they choose to do. The guy who who doesn't get up early in the morning, the guy who doesn't exercise, does he understand with his mind that it's a good thing to exercise in the morning? Does he or not? Do, do we all agree that it's good to, to work out, to do sports, to be healthy, to yeah. have a healthy yeah. lifestyle? Right? Yeah, most, of us. most of us understand yeah. that, right? Mm -hmm. But most of us are too lazy to act on it. That's the truth. Most of us, some, some of us are not lazy, but some of us, a lot of them us, uh, are. Right? And the person says, okay, I'm free to do, to do whatever I want, I'm going to smoke a cigarette. Why? Because I choose to. Well, my friend, you're, not, you're addicted to, to nicotine. It's not because you choose to. It's because you're a slave to your, to your habit. It's not, it's not that the, I'm free to do it. I'm not free. The, the ultimate freedom, the ultimate freedom is, uh, is not the, to have an easy life. The guy who gets up early in the morning, he works out, he doesn't have a free life. When you're in a when you're in a job, it's not an easy life. But that's the ultimate freedom. The ultimate freedom is the I took you up to this nation so you could be free from your habits, that you could be free from your addictions. What that they that they yes na stayeshe svoboda. The the woman comes to again to Rabbi Mansur. She says, I don't want uh, I don't want you guys to teach my daughter how to dress in school. She she can wear whatever she wants. Okay, so he says, okay, if we're not gonna tell her what to wear, right? Long, wear a long skirt, cover your 
uh, your open uh, parts of your body, what is she going to wear? You know what she's going to wear? She's going to wear what the, what the designers in Italy are going to tell her to wear. What the designers in uh, France are going <coughs> to tell her what to wear. So this, this year, Rabbi uh, Versace decided that it's, uh, <laughs> the purple is in style. And now uh, she wants to wear purple. It's not what she wants. It's what the designer wants her to wear. Understand? And the next year, uh, Rabbi Gucci decided that it's the yellow is in style. And again, he says, the girl comes to school and she says, I wear what I want. But it's not what she wants. It's what the, the designer in Paris wants her to wear. You understand? And the, it's really, we always uh, fill up our heads with something. It's, it's really up to us to choose. We can fill up with the information that Hashem gave us, the, the manual, right? He says, this is how I want you to live your life. The Torah, the Torah is really, this is how I want you to live your life. Or you could, uh, you could choose any other source of information. The, the culture around us, the music, the, the TV, uh, the the knowledge which it doesn't uh, improve our lives, but a lot of times it hurts our life. It's really up to us. So now, you guys have any questions regarding Pesach, by the way, how to kosher things or how to to do things on a Pesach or night? We have like a two, three minutes, we can, uh, I can answer your questions if you want. No, anybody? Okay, if not, I, I just want to end up with a few words that says, uh, Rabban Gamaliel said the following thing, whoever doesn't say the, the three Things on Passover night doesn't fulfill his uh, his obligation. Arkadi, if you don't mind, you could use that. But uh, you have to say, preferably, you have to say the whole Haggadah. And I told you the tricks last week. I told you this is the best way. If you're letting a seder at home, let's say interactive, right? Do it interactive. Let everybody read a little piece, and this way everybody will feel like they participate. And you will do, you will finish before you know it, and everybody will feel part of it. That's a, that's a great method to do it. Right? Artur, the studio is not Simeon, yeah? Yeah. At least well, you can use that, right? You can say, guys, let's everybody take turns. And everybody say a little piece, and then everybody will feel part of it. You understand? So now, uh, there are some things, let's say you're too tired, or you want to skip something, you know you're going to skip something. There's something you have to say, some things you cannot skip. Here, here is one of them. Rabban Gamliel used to say, he says, whoever doesn't mention the following three items on Passover night, he didn't fulfill his obligation. We have many obligations. We have, to, we have obligation to eat matzah on Passover night. We have obligation to drink four cups of wine while we live on the left side. Right? We have obligation to speak the story, to share the story of Yitziah Mitzrayim, of uh, Hashem took us out of Egypt. Same, when you, one of the things you have to say is Pesach, Matzah, and Maror. You have to talk about these three things. What is Pesach? And the Haggadah tells you. Pesach, When we had temple, we had another mitzvah. And that's what I showed the mitzvah. Kaka mitzvah? Eta shashlik is barani. Alright. Mola mitzvah to bring a, right, a lamb. To bring a, 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 a Pesach lamb. A Pesach sacrifice. Right, thank you. What's your name? David. David, welcome. Uh, David says correct, we have to we have the mitzvah, we have the obligation to bring a Pesach sacrifice. And uh, that was bad in, uh, back in the, in, the, in the days when we had the Beit HaMikdash, the temple. What does the word Pesach mean? Does anybody know what does Pesach mean? Talk. Huh? Talk. Oh, Pesach. Yeah, there is an explanation like this. Pesach is the uh, two words. Pe means uh, mouth. Sach means uh, talking. Talking mouth. What? You know, all year round you're supposed to talk as little as possible. Why? Because you might say some uh, it's splitting, you know, you could say some uh, gossip. But pass up on the Passover night, you're supposed to talk a lot, but not just uh, talk about the, the latest divorces in, the, in the Hollywood, but you're supposed to talk about the, how Hashem took us out of Egypt. Pass up. The more you talk about how Hashem took us out of Egypt, the better it is. Pass up, right? The speaking mouth. That's a good explanation. What, what's the classic explanation? How do you say Pesach in English? Passover. Passover. You know what's Pesach? Pesach literally means Passover. <laughs> Jump over it. Right? On the... Yeah. English too, no? Okay. 
Okay, very interesting explanation. So the Passover, what was the last of the ten plagues right before the Jewish people left Egypt? Do you guys know? Uh, the death of the firstborn. How? What was that like? Uh, Okay. Uh, Grad was one of them, right? One of the ten. Последняя казнь. Последняя египетская казнь. Исаи сказал... Да, первенца, смерть первенца. Потому что его отец сделал то же самое для евреев. Окей, как это происходило практически? Где евреи были? Фараон остался жив. Они дома были. Это хороший вопрос. Да, мы не говорим об этом. Потому что им сказали, чтобы надо было каждую эту дверь покрасить кровью ямнёка. Окей, очень хорошо. Цвин нам говорит очень-очень хорошую вещь. Это то, что Ашем сказал нам. I want you to take a lamb, slaughter it. A lamb was an Egyptian god. It was like taking a, a USSR flag, going to Kremlin in the 1950s and start burning the flag. And says, I don't care about USSR, I don't care about communism. That's, that was, that's what it was like. They had to take a lamb, welcome. They had to take a lamb and then uh, bring it and uh, sacrifice it uh, on the they had to tell Egyptians, like, I don't, we don't care about your gods, we don't care about your values. You know, we have our God, he's running the show. So what they did, they, uh, they slaughtered the lamb, and they took some of the blood and they smeared on the doorposts of their house, and on the pritalkan, you know, on the... Uh, the on the frame. On the frame, right, on the top of the frame. Right? So now, when the, uh, when the death was sort of going over through Egypt, God saw the Jewish people's houses, the people who, who, who dedicated, the people who were proud to be Jews, right? They, those who smeared with blood their doorposts. He saw it, he noticed it, and he passed over their houses, and he killed all, all the Egyptian houses. He, 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 he brought the plague in the Egyptian houses, but he passed over the Jewish houses. Pass out means he passed over on the Piripurikna. What's your name, sir? Eugene, welcome. Good to have you. Okay, so this is what Passover means. This is one of the things we have to mention on Passover night. The other thing is matzah. Uh, who passed over? Passover, what? Okay. God passed over the Jewish uh, houses. Uh, on Peter Prigno, he passed over the Jewish houses. Was the angel of death or was it destroyed? Not God. God cannot judge. Was the angel of death or was it destroyed? It doesn't, it doesn't mean literally. Это не значит, что Бог прыгнул. I'm very happy. Не напрямую слове перепрыгнул, он пошел. А потом он оставил их живых. Он оставил их живых. Very often the Torah uses the human language in regards to God. It says God took us out with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. When the person wants to say, покажи мне мышцы, я шел мне мышцы, я говорю, я говорю, я говорю, it's a symbol of muscle, it's a symbol of strength, it doesn't, doesn't mean that God has hands, it doesn't mean that uh, he's a human, no, God is not human, he doesn't have hands, he doesn't have body, but when the Torah says he took us, he took us out with a strong hand, it means to, to, to communicate to us the message that, you know, God is strong, and he took us out, right? So was it Ramallah, or was it Okay, there are, there are a few places actually says Bechvador, but more than one place it says that uh, God took, he, the, he brought this plate himself, and he took it out uh, himself, not through the angel. Another place I think it believes that uh, it says to the angel, he sent the Malach Amavet, he sent the angel of the death. So that's what they mean by when they say Passover? Passover means, yeah. red. Right, Passover, Passover. Passover means he dropped over the house. On the, uh, the other thing is uh, Maror. Maror is the... What is Maror? Gorka uh, Trava. The bitter herbs. Why do we eat bitter herbs on the, on the Passover night? Very good. Exactly what Alex says and uh, what uh, Sasha says that to remind us about the bitterness of, uh, of the Egyptian exile. It was very, very hard. The people, uh, they, were, they were tortured. Exactly. You know, originally we were supposed to have bitter herbs together with the Passover lamb. That's just the one you must have salad. It's the best. The bitter shawarma. You know, right now we have the machine matzah. The machine matzah is it's like a cracker. You know, it's very hard. But uh, I don't know if you ever had a Sephardi matzah. I remember when we spent the year in Israel. We had the Rab Mahput. He uh, has this uh, special matzah. It's sort of like a, it's almost like a, a, a lava. You know, lava. 
Like yeah. pita. It's a little harder than pita, but it's not, it definitely it's not like we have the matzah. Uh -huh. So it's easy to do. Very, very good. So this is probably what they had. That was probably the first shuva, shuvarma, you know, and they took the matzah. They took the lamb, they took the salat, and they took the salat, and they took the salat, and they took the salat. Maror. So this is one of the things we must mention on the Passover night is Maror. So one was uh, Passover, one, uh, one is Maror, and the other one is Matzah. Of course Matzah. Matzah is, is very, very essential to the Passover table. We have to eat it and we have to mention, we have to know why we're eating it. Why are we eating Matzah? Anybody know? So, because that's what we, we did. We have uh, left in the rush, so we have, we have to make our bread really quick. We have before, because the, if the dough would raise, yeah. it would be spoiled. So we have no time to raise the dough. Right, that's exactly what Alec is saying. We didn't have time to bake it. Hashem took us out. He says, okay, now, guys, now's the time. Get up and leave. Let's go. Let's go right now. Don't wait. You can't have uh, time spending baking this and that. Just take whatever you have, bake it right away. Take it. Let's go. And the, the way it says in Agada, it says, and I will finish with this. It says, Shalohi speak of Betzikam. That our forefathers didn't have time to uh, to make it to give it a chance to rise. They had they were not allowed, they were not permitted to delay. You hear what he's saying? So they, were, they, were, they were not allowed to they were not allowed to they were not allowed to postpone, they're not allowed to delay in Egypt. They actually, the Hida brings in the name of Zohar, it says that had they delayed a little more, they would stay in Egypt. Why? Because the Jewish people, after 210 years of Egyptian culture, of Egyptian uh, idol worship, of Egyptian pritzut, uh, uh, adult, uh, adulter, uh, after 210 years of that influence, Egyptian Egypt uh, influenced the world on such a low spiritual level, if they had stayed a little longer, they would not have opportunity to leave. So they had to get up and leave. Right. So guys, uh, those of you who missed the beginning, I mentioned that after Passover, after Passover, we're starting a new series on uh, Thursday nights. Until now, we just had the Wednesday night classes. Right now, we're going to start Thursday night classes. It's going to be in English every week. Usually, the Wednesday classes are in Russian. So, and uh, also, we're going to have a dinner. and. Uh, this this whole year of class is going to be dedicated to Nazik and Igor and uh, really if you want to make a difference for your friends who passed away if you really want to give them opportunity to get a, closer to God do it for them not just for yourself do it for them you can do the Shemad for the elevation of their soul and it's a tremendous opportunity to help your friend if Nazik called you today and says come over I need your help we will do it for him, right? And this is it. This is a. Uh, this is the last chance to give him opportunity to become close to Hashem by giving tzedakah, by coming and learning, and by coming and saying the blessings. And uh, may the neshamot have aliyah. Amen. Amen.